Okay, case three. A 60-year-old man with a two centimeter breast mass. I can take this one. Okay. Um, my name is Morgan Harones. Um, I'm a first year. So what I'm seeing here is um, a well circumscribed kind of a un unencapsulated um, subcutaneous um, um, type of mass. Mm -hmm. um, it's composed of um, variable, uh, variably sized fascicles. Um, on higher power, if you look closer, you see these like characteristic bundles of really um, thick, coarse collagen. They're yeah. really prominent. Um, and then um, on higher power, as you are, um, you see these uh, bland spindle cells. Um, they're variably sized, um, but very rare atypia. They look pretty bland. Um, they, they kind of show some areas of palisading, but um, it's not, I mean, completely uh, uniform and dramatic. Um, so I was thinking with this picture with these really thick coarse bundles of collagen, um, uh, mammary type myofibroblastoma. What a rock star, man. I love you guys. First year stepping up to the plate and nailing like really hard, you know, kind of esoteric soft tissue tumors. Well done, that's really great. Um, yeah, this is a great, real classic example, I think, of a mammary type myofibroblastoma. And I agree with you that these, these very thick bundles of ropey collagen dividing the fascicles, uh, clumps and clusters of bland spindle cells is a pretty helpful feature. And again, this is one of those other entities that's in the, the kind of RB1 loss group. It tends to have RB1 loss. It has a lot of features overlapping with spindle cell lipoma. It can have fat in it, and sometimes the fat is abundant. And, um, and, you know, spindle cell lipoma, I, I didn't put one in for today, but um, they, you know, even though we call them lipomas, they're probably actually a fibroblastic tumor that happens to grow a lot of fat in it or incorporate fat into it. So that's why, that's why we can have spindle cell lipomas that are low fat or no fat even. And that's why we can have overlap with these other fibroblastic and myofibroblastic tumors, because they probably all the, the primary cell is the, the spindled fibroblast or myofibroblastic cell. The, the things that help me a little bit in separating this entity out from spindle cell lipoma is I feel like you tend to have much more prominent collagen bundles like you described very nicely. You tend to have a um, the, the groups and clusters of cells really line up d dramatically in between these bundles. And to me, what it gives you, the, the word that resonates with me is this kind of zigzagging shape. Like it's like the, they go back and forth in these real sharp lines that interconnect together in this kind of zigzagging of the fascicles and, and palisades of bland spindle cells with a bit of myxoid background in between these thick bundles of, of dense uh, collagen, that's the very characteristic look. And RB1 will be lost, CD34 is usually positive. The one big difference on immunostain is Desmond is usually expressed uh, pretty abundantly. So the co-expression of 34 and Desmond here um, is a pretty common finding. Although spindle cell lipomas can have a little bit of Desmond. And again, it's kind of where do you draw the line about how to so separate these entities? It doesn't really matter. They're benign and they're, they are probably closely related entities. So this is another entity that, that was initially thought to be um, in the, the breast of older men. And now we recognize also occurs in women, probably about equally to men, and also can occur in other sites, which is why we call it mammary type myofibroblastoma, because it's, it's found in other sites. I think the last one I saw was like actually from the upper back. It was like a good site for spindle cell lipoma, but it really had this dramatic zigzag look and a lot of Desmond expression. And it was pretty big. That one was like eight or 10 centimeters. They thought it was a sarcoma clinically, and thankfully it was not. So these are benign and they are usually cured by simple excision and they're good to know for breast pathology because they do occur in, in female breasts and they get detected because of breast screening and mammography. So you, you do tend to see them in, in women because they get detected. Whereas I think in men, a lot of times they present in, in older patients once they've kind of grown enough that they present as a mass. So in the, here's kind of, again, that like kind of vague palisading that parallel array packeting kind of look where the cells are kind of vaguely like hanging out with each other um but um but not like perfectly lined up like a um like a schwannoma would be so uh again another entity in the rb1 family um uh which that's not like an official family but i i kind of think of it as a useful term or a useful grouping of these of these um, tumors because you can kind of they all have these similar overlapping features 
All right, so mammary type myofibroblastoma. Really good. They don't always have this dramatic of collagen, but th I thought this is just such a perfect classic one. I couldn't couldn't help but uh, share it. And again, they could also sometimes have dilated vessels and could, could potentially mimic solitary fibrous tumor also, and STAT-6 would easily solve that problem in that case. Okay, great.